Uh, today you were, we'll have a short speech about uh, data demarching and marshaling uh, in a C++. Uh, we build this uh, long name so to draw your attention to us. Uh, also, high performance words is always good too. Yeah, so uh, first of all, we'll, let, uh, we'll take a short introduce. Okay, uh, so we are from Yandex. Uh, Yandex is a leading search engine in Russia, like Google, 10 times smaller, still good. Uh, we have a leader in the search traffic in Russia. Um, plenty of employees, plenty of users, heavy load, a bunch of stuff. So we are from Mail. It's popular in Russian, Russian-speaking countries. So we were established in 2000, uh, have 10, 9 million unique users and uh, uh, 100 million message sent per day. Well, uh, we have uh, many services, many microservices. So, so we have uh, some problem with microservices, uh, and uh, we want to speak about it now. Okay, so we'll do this switch quite a while. Um, uh, here the situation. Uh, we since we have a microservice architecture, uh, we have uh, dozens of uh, services, uh, mostly written in C++. Um, communicating via various protocols, HTTP, uh, bi some binary protocols, uh, and other. Uh, via legacy stuff, uh, they are using uh, various text formats, JSON, XML, uh, and the stuff like that. Uh, and uh, all services uh, using uh, their own handcrafted serialization, deserialization code which is uh, not exactly a brilliant idea, as you may think. Um, so, Sergey will introduce you in the little everyday hell that we work with. Yeah, yes, uh, I, I love this slide because this is UML, I like UML. And <laughs> here is uh, some, uh, some uh, a diagram which will express the uh, situation. Uh, there are some uh, uh, transcription on Russian words, just to upgrade you a little <laughs> about the situation. So, uh, they have a service uh, ADIN, which communicates uh, with uh, a database buzzer via binary protocol, and uh, we have a service DWA, which communicates with ODIN by JSON and with TREE by XML. Uh, the, there is a service CHETIRI, which communicates with uh, service DWA, and unfortunately, it communicates in a complicated format, the, uh, which is uh, a mix of YAML and comma-separated values. So this is the situation. We have uh, different formats. We have a mis mixing formats, and uh, what with which we have a deal. Uh, this is real story. <laughs> Actually, not, but close enough. Uh, so uh, we are in the situation that we want. Uh, some mechanism to help us. Uh, we need unification. Uh, we don't want to write uh, same code for different uh, structures every day. And the uh, performance should be a uh, viable property too. So yeah. Uh, so let's uh, look at some example. We have some simple uh, structure systems uh, that represents uh, some dummy mail service. Uh, here we have message, uh, represents your email, uh, which consists of some strings and a uh, uh, container of another structures, um, which just for fun represented via setter getter protocols. Um, so this is a slide for UML lovers, lovers like Sergey. Yes, I like this. I like this uh, slide. I made it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, the presentation of previous slide, but in a uh, diagram manner. Is here is message. Here is the recipient. The recipient uh, have some type with uh, which is with some enum, and uh, it contains email with uh, display name and address. Uh, message has ID, some subject, recipients, uh, and uh, the body. And uh, so. Uh, 
we want uh, to serialize all these structures in JSON. So uh, let's uh, just uh, apply some YAGEL here. YAGEL is a library for uh, uh, JSON generation and uh, uh, JSON generation and uh, parsing. But at the moment you start, uh, it's a C library. Mm, everyone likes C libraries. Uh, not really. Uh, so yeah, you end up uh, with a code like this, just to serialize the structure with uh, several fields. And the uh, worst things about that is uh, if you need to serialize another library, you'll just end up writing some code just like that, but with another fields. But uh, hey, we only need to write this once. Or are we really? What about XML supporting or other stuff like that? So, and we need, of course, uh, to serialize uh, some uh, data from database in binary format. And uh, do we need another hundred lines of codes to do this? How do you think? Well, I'd like to know how to do this. Uh, another, uh, another problem that could be discussed before we came up with a solution is, uh, exa uh, for example, we need to serialize uh, that message structure exactly like before, JSON, but without some field, perhaps without body field. We need to do li some lightweight uh, endpoint to make access to meta information and no body. I suggest you to uh, make a choice. You ha we have three uh, alter alternatives here. First, if uh, we could add the boolean flag to our serialization routine, and uh, depends on that, to choose either we add a body field or not. Um, either we just copy pasting our um, our uh, function and uh, remove one line from it. Either we uh, make some uh, data transfer object and uh, add some function to use it. Um, as for me, I don't like either solution of it, neither. Um, and I'm struggling to some solution that could fit better. So uh, there are some kind of disadvantages of uh, the previous approach, uh, well, we don't like, of course, it. And uh, what we want. Let's so in the nutshell, we want the code like this. We want uh, some object that uh, knows how to serialize data in JSON. We need some object to be serialized. And we need some routine that do the stuff like that. Uh, no, please notice that uh, JSON writer here, uh, object that do the magic, uh, isn't aware of uh, what kind of structure you want to serialize at the time that you create it. Since, uh, so all the code uh, we write in the JSON writer is unaware of structures and can be applied to any structure you want. So full solution must uh, looks like this. So we have some DB reader, have some JSON writer to write uh, JSON. Uh, we get some uh, data from uh, DB, apply DB reader and get a message object. Modify it, uh, for example, we want to fix uh, some broken recipients. And when we reflect it uh, to JSON and give it off. To address uh, the point, uh, if we want to use another structure, all we need to do is uh, create the structure. Uh, then we need to adapt it. We'll cover that later. Shortly, the uh, point here is that in C++ we have no nature introspection at the moment, sadly. Uh, so we need to do some extra work to have uh, meta information about the, our structures. And we all done then. We can use uh, any object of another structure. And we don't have to touch our code related to JSON. It's all the same. 
no matter what you have in the structures, it can be pods, it can be uh, classes, it can be basically anything that you want. No JSON adjustment should be made. Uh, so, uh, so here is let's uh, return to uh, uh, our problem uh, of. Uh, uh, given to client uh, message by the default body. Here it is very simple because we uh, make some new, some view uh, for this uh, representation and uh, just serialize it in JSON. And uh, I want to notice that uh, the message uh, no body view is uh, only view and uh, no the data transfer uh, data transfer object. So there is no copy of data. So. Let's. So we present our lovely bicycle solution. All the developers like bicycles. So, so, so we do. You need to point that uh, bicycle solution in, in Russian is uh, reinvented in, in the wheel in English. So uh, let's uh, look. Uh, let's have a look at it. Um, at first, we'll want to define some resource subjects. What uh, we need, what we want to uh, get from our library. First of all, uh, we need to, uh, we want to do easy definition. That means no ex internal tools, no external tools. Uh, we don't want to have uh, some code generation or stuff like that, uh, IDL or something. Uh, we would like to avoid that. That m makes life easier. Uh, second, we want. Uh, uh, allow clients uh, work with their exactly their structures. Do not uh, have to implement uh, some structures just to make serialization deserializations. So no copies made. Uh, life is easier again. Uh, third, we like to have some additional features besides serialization deserialization. For example, we'd like to uh, express our our structures, document our structures with some kind of comments and then uh, be able to get it in runtime. Uh, for example, if we have some HTTP endpoint which returns some information, we'd like to uh, have a way to know what fields it will be, what fields it might be, uh, what kind of information it expects. And also we'd like to uh, have zero copy support, so no copies made uh, while uh, serialization or deserialization if, if it's possible. Here's a slide that uh, represents the basic idea. We was inspired uh, by a uh, stack overflow post from a uh, man with uh, nickname Sehe. Uh, we want uh, to define some uh, meta information via bus fusion. When we want uh, visiting data entities, each uh, and uh, then uh, we want to apply appropriate visitor for each attribute of our meta to reflect it. So uh, this is. Uh, one more time, how the solution must be uh, l looks like. Okay, so what we need to do uh, for our uh, structures is uh, adapt it to generate some uh, meta information about it. Who is uh, familiar with Boost Fusion here? Okay, so for those who are not, uh, what this does is basically generate a bunch of uh, bunch of structures uh, with some uh, traits about uh, about our structure message, email, and recipient. Uh, so we can uh, we can work with uh, much like a sequence of uh, tuple sequence of references to our structure and uh, kind of iterate uh, between it in the metaprogramming way. So yeah, uh, Sergey will cover it in a short. So uh, we want to use uh, Boost Fusion macro like uh, Boost Fusion adapt struct, Boost Fusion adapt ADT, and Boost Fusion uh, define struct uh, to uh, 
adapt existing structure, ab adapt existing object with methods, and uh, uh, provide some views to uh, change the representation. Uh, so in lower power of slide, there is an example of defining uh, the structure, the obvious fusion. Okay, uh, so uh, we also want uh, addressing to our problem with uh, returning message with no body field, with no some, uh, without some field. Uh, there is a helpful macro that allows you to define uh, some view. So it will be another sequence of uh, references to your, to your structure that uh, missing some, some field. And so you will, uh, allow, you will be allowed to change the way, change the format you're using, or change the content you're using without touching the serialization code itself. So uh, this is uh, only an idea. We d uh, did not implement it, uh, but the idea is to provide uh, runtime documentation of uh, the uh, interface entities. So, for example, we want uh, to provide some macro which uh, helps you to uh, describe uh, entities of uh, a structure, of a class, and when uh, we want to uh, to do something, uh, you know, something like VSDL uh, in SOAP and uh, something like uh, Swagger IO, uh, you just uh, make an HTTP request uh, for a uh, special uh, URL and uh, the service uh, reply you uh, uh, the description uh, of uh, a structure of uh, an uh, interface in uh, in something in some format uh, for example in this case in yaml okay so let's have a look of in, in a little bit in depth what's going on uh, I'll cover it a bit uh, so our library our libraries consists of mainly two points uh, first part is core is uh, where where this uh, magic happens, uh, where we use Boost Fusion information uh, and iterate over it. Uh, second part part is for matters. Uh, it's a point of customization for library users, library clients. Uh, you can uh, implement your own formatter, uh, set a pair of methods, and uh, have your have your JSON, XML, whatever thing goes. And uh, let's have a look how it works. So we have our message object, or we have our JSON writer. This is uh, some kind of formatter that we wrote. And we want to apply it to our message to have a JSON get out. Uh, well, what uh, our formatter I do does uh, at the first glance is just uh, delegates all the work to the core, uh, and then uh, he pretends that uh, JSON is all set via YJL backend, and he just spits the results out. So uh, this is an example of magic. Uh, then uh, the message. Uh, there are uh, uh, several uh, uh, function uh, apply uh, for. They are different for each kind of uh, uh, type. For example, they're different for structure. They're different for map. They're different for uh, tuple. They're dif uh, different for. Uh, uh, vector and so on. So this is an example for a structure. So here is a, a core provides uh, two uh, events for the JSON uh, writer. The first is on struct start, uh, which uh, which marks the start of structure, and the the second is, second is on struct end, which marks the end of structure. And so the core uh, expects some uh, uh, some actions from uh, the uh, JSON writer on these events. 
So yeah, essentially what's going on is we like to open a curly braces for JSON here, uh, process each member here and close them up here. We'll get to that later, uh, but the idea is that way. So yeah, uh, what's connecting between uh, core and formatters in is the visitor. Every, every example of a formatter class is a visitor. Uh, who is uh, familiar with visitor design partner? Okay, so <laughs> pretty much everyone. Uh, so here is how, how you visitor might look. Uh, it has a bunch of um, methods. You shouldn't, uh, you have not to implement, implement all of them, though you can. And uh, they are covering a bunch of uh, special cases. What do you do when you occur struct, uh, start of structure, end of structure, some special types like smart pointers, optional values, uh, containers, and things like that. Uh, and uh, this is how it looks in the real code. Actually, not, but much, pretty much like like this. Um, so uh, here you might may notice that uh, this uh, this methods has a value parameter uh, and tag parameter. Tag parameter is used to uh, make a context of what's going on. Where do I, where are we now inside of uh, structure? So we got a uh, got to make some maybe name value pairs for JSON or maybe we are inside of uh, array so we don't have a look for a name uh, so yeah tags are looking like that so there are three types of uh, tag the first is uh, marks element if it's uh, an item of the map uh, the second marks element if it's uh, item of a sequence, uh, sequence must be uh, maybe uh, 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 something like a std set, a std vector and a std tuple and uh, the third is a name and item tag which uh, marks uh, uh, an entity uh, which is uh, an attribute of an, a structure or a, a method of uh, a class uh, and uh, you always can get a name of the item if it's marked as a name it item tag uh, using the uh, name function. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, how uh, your uh, methods might look like. Uh, on the field you might want to add JSON uh, item, uh, map item, if you have a name for it, if you have name item tag, you can retrieve name and uh, put it on into JSON or just uh, an error item if you are inside of sequence. There are a bunch of other methods uh, too, we'll cover them shortly because they are running, running late. Oh, sorry. What's the significance of the fact that the start returns a visitor, but the end returns nothing? Oh, yeah, that's actually an interesting question, and uh, I suppose we'll cover it just in a few slides, okay. if you can wait. Sergey will cover it in detail. Uh, so, yeah, here it goes. So, uh, this is uh, what uh, the onstruct start, onstruct out, uh, mm, handlers might, might look like. For example, for JSON uh, on start of structure, we open the JSON map uh, because structures in JSON represent in, in a map. And uh, on, a structure, uh, on the end on structure, we close this map. So uh, this is why we return the visitor. Uh, in this case, we have some uh, sequence which is represented as a CSV. So f in this case we return the CSV reader on the start of the sequence. So the returning of the visitor allow us to apply a, 
uh, visitor which is uh, which is uh, allow us to parse different format so the this visitor will be applied for uh, every uh, for every item of sequence uh, that's why we return the visitor yeah, so basically what's going on, you parsing a G G JSON. Uh, with this mechanism you can parse, not only serialize. And uh, at some point it should be it should be CSV, just because Chris legacy and the uh, old clients and stuff like that. So you are specializing on sequence start uh, by uh, some concrete uh, concrete type here. Actually, this is this will not compile because you need to uh, you need to adjust the types but the idea here is uh, that you can ser uh, specialize it with your special type that need to be coded via csv and uh, that's it's all done you return another visitor that would be used at this uh, level of nesting and when you came back you return to your sweet json uh, there is some point of customization for core you could uh, add uh, additional behavior for additional types. Uh, we did it uh, simple and stupid via uh, adding another uh, name it uh, functions, though it could be uh, implemented more generally. But uh, uh, this serves as well for for a while. Um, so yeah, uh, with this in mind, you could. Uh, you could, uh, for example, just uh, parse some uh, some message with optional values via boost optional. So it's natural to represent optional data win, uh, with uh, within C++ as boost optional values. So it's nice to uh, make your parse code just put the data in the optional if it's here and leave optional uninitialized if it's not. So uh, that's what we got, uh, and the uh, code looks fine, maybe not, but <laughs> working at least. So uh, now we need to make our competition. Uh, we are in C++, performance matter, uh, and the stuff, so uh, why we uh, that's why we decided to make a race. Our competitors today are, uh, first of all, we did some handwritten, uh, handwritten handwritten um, realization uh, implementation of uh, serializing data of uh, with uh, c library agile um, so it's like a baseline for us uh, then we have uh, our wire reflection uh, solution uh, visitor is uh, himself is based on agile so we cannot uh, really expect uh, any performance better uh, than a handwritten solution but uh, we expect uh, at least we hope that we will be in line with it and uh, just for fun uh, we comparing with protobuf it's not really uh, the same things because in protobuf you have binary format you have fixed format uh, and uh, you have to uh, use idl you have to generate code you have to use uh, explicit uh, external to your code uh, data structures so it's not really the same but mm, why not check how good we are how bad we are nobody knows so what we measure is uh, average latency uh, our benchmark is uh, basically have a, a service a HTTP service based on Boostasio uh, that constantly spits out uh, Exam uh, objects of message, struct message uh, that we showed on earlier and uh, we just uh, 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 have a client with uh, multi-trading with uh, which is uh, requesting him uh, requesting service server mm, all the time so we do measure average latency how long the serialization uh, takes in terms of time we measure CPU consumption uh, we, we measure memory consumption uh, if uh, if you, you have uh, another data train transfer objects there should be a little bit of memory consumption 
and we measure lines of code as uh, because of what we what motivates us to do such a library is uh, uh, to reduce a, a boilerplate code. Uh, this is hardware we're using. Not pretty interesting, maybe. You can find it on the slides later if you're interested. Uh, test is on Ubuntu. Uh, GCC, Boost, all the versions are here. So, Sergey will cover our model a little bit. So, here is a description of uh, a model of the web service which we used. Uh, we have uh, three methods of service. We uh, first uh, method returns uh, all my box messages. It uh, saturates the network, and uh, we didn't use the results of it. So the uh, second is return the single message. Uh, it is uh, uh, this uh, method shows uh, no meaning uh, results, and uh, we di uh, didn't use it uh, too. But we use uh, some uh, uh, some combination of uh, these two methods. Uh, met uh, this uh, method uh, uh, simulates. Uh, uh uh, uh, s uh selection uh, from uh, database uh, messages which uh, uh which uh, mm, sorry <laughs> okay so uh, messages for sp specified recipient okay uh with uh, we used in benchmark so this is uh, an uh, an architecture. So this is uh, we based on uh, Boost as a HTTP server, and uh, the mailbox is uh, an abstract. Uh, uh, sorry, the mailbox is an interface uh, to the f f free message, uh, f free methods, uh, which are displayed before, and. Uh, that's it, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so uh, uh, now we have some results uh, to show you, uh, but we'll tell you about it. So yeah, uh, at last, some numbers, no more bore speeches. Let's look at it. First, latency. Uh, here we have three solutions, as we mentioned. Uh, Top one is wire reflection based on Yagile. Uh, second one is uh, Bayer Yagile, handwritten. And the third one is protobuf. Uh, we had to say that uh, we uh, actually uh, optimized protobuf a little bit more that uh, we do we did with uh, handwritten and uh, wire reflection um, ones because uh, because of uh, we want to. Uh, get anything from put above what you could possibly get so we could uh, get this maximum possibility uh, line to to compare with so yeah latency here is pretty much the same uh, it's uh, not really interesting uh, put above uh, here is a little better one uh, of course because uh, put above is a binary format it uh, has no uh, escaping, uh, echronizing, stuff like that, uh, comparing to JSON. Otherwise, wire reflection and YAGEL uh, are pretty much the same, and that's okay for us. Um, CPU consumption between uh, wire reflection and uh, YAGEL is about 1% of difference. Not really much the same. Uh, not really much. Uh, not pretty much. Mm, I guess you could buy it. Uh, Protobuf, of course, is a, a clean leader here. Again, because of uh, binary format, uh, you haven't uh, uh, you haven't much things here that needed in uh, when you do Yagile. Uh, uh, yes. So that's what is it? Uh, memory consumption is. Uh, a little test where we uh, made a vector of big size. Uh, every element contains a message of big size, and so on, so on. And then we serialize that message, uh, that vector of messages, to see if we have some issues with uh, copying and stuff like that, which leads to uh, 
memory locations. So as we see here, we have a uh, about of 50, uh, 30 kilobytes of a little uh, 30 kilobytes of uh, additional data, uh, about a little less than a percent. Uh, it's not so bad. Uh, protobuffer is a little bit more because of uh, data transfer objects, but still nothing criminal. And here is the line of code. This is the best slide uh, in this presentation. So uh, the top one is wire reflection. Uh, we build it to to write less of code, and here we are. Uh, uh, not exactly what you expected to see, right? But I uh, think here is the uh, we've included uh, here lines of code that uh, belongs to JSON. Uh, general serialization routines, so it could be reusable. And if you uh, throw it away, uh, assuming that you will reuse it again and again and again, and it it's not uh, really, uh, it really doesn't bother you, you will end up with uh, this this uh, picture that is slightly more uh, promising. And actually, out of that ten uh, lines, nine lines is about boost fusion adapting. So if you're, for example, have your uh, objects, have your types already adapted for JSON, uh, JSON uh, representation, if you want to do XML representation with uh, XML uh, visitor ready, you will get down with li one line of code. So pretty much uh, one line of code for for every adapted. Uh, structure for every uh, format that you specified already. Uh, here we have a little bit of um, crunch stuff, uh, issues with within Boost Fusion library, what we have, um, uh, what we went into, but I suppose we are short on time, so we could um, show that later. You could see it in the slides, uh, you could, mm, we could, uh, talk about it later. Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, f seven minutes. I suppose we have show some, uh, we'll have to leave some time for questions. And then if there are none, we uh, go to issues. Okay. Some questions, guys? OK. Did, did I hear you say you're using Swagger? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, we uh, didn't use. Uh, the question is, did we use? Uh, did we use Swagger? No, we didn't use. We um, I um, I mentioned uh, Swagger in context of what uh, we want uh, to produce some description of interface like Swagger. Okay. So, but could you then generate your uh, whatever your documentation tool is from your? Uh, fusion definition is that uh, yes, but we wanted to, to do it online. I mean, you 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 just uh, ask a service uh, f for for example for a method, uh, give me the interface description okay. in YAML and it gives us because uh, you know uh, this is the most actual documentation, uh, most actual description, of course. Yeah, the thing here is because uh, uh, as you have some farm of services, some farm of server servers, you could possibly uh, get them out of sync uh, in versions. So it's nice when you can just go to a server that's running just in time and ask what the kinds of, kinds of structures you you are providing and what kind of structures you are uh, waiting. So yeah. So I suppose that you had <coughs> quite a few um, structure, you know, different structures to adapt with Fusion, not only like a, one structure a message. You probably had a few of them. Um, and so did you, what, what, what were the compile times like? Uh, actually, problems with the compile times or? Uh, okay, so what the question was about uh, what is the compile time uh, for using the Boost Fusion when adapting the structures? So, uh, well, uh, we haven't really uh, measured it. We'll try to use a benchmark you mentioned about. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, compare, uh, compile time is a, for certain, is a problem. Uh, we have, a, I suppose, like three or five or ten minutes compile times. Uh, but since we, uh, we are, we're using continuous integration, 
uh, that's not really that much of a problem. I, I, I want to say, uh, but we use uh, boost period, and uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in this case, uh, you know, we, we just uh, can't uh, measure this. Uh, we can't measure uh, the uh, time consumption for a boost fusion in this case. So, any other questions? Okay, so. I think we should uh, should end because the next session will be in three minutes, I suppose. Uh, thank you all guys for coming in.